Okay, uh, so today we are going to learn a technique to compute um, the determinant of a matrix. So, but first, uh, Desna note Jacobi adjacent uh, no, adjoint matrix theorem. Okay, so uh, let's say M is an N by N matrix. And for indices I1, I2, IK, and J1, J2, JK, uh, we use this notation i1 dot 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 i n i k j1 dot 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 j k this denotes the matrix uh, obtained from m by deleting the specified rows and columns by deleting Uh, these rows, I1, IK, and columns, J1, JK. So just, uh, this is a common notation in mathematics. So for instance, if we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. So we have, if you have a 4x4 four four matrix like this, then M11, one, one, this is the matrix obtained by deleting the first row and first column. So F, G, H, J, K, L, N, O, P, like that. And we can delete many uh, rows and columns like this. 1, 3, 2, 4. So you delete uh, first row, third, third row, second uh, column, fourth column. Then what you are left with are these E G M O. So we're gonna use this notation. And yes. There is a relation in uh, matrices among those. So that's uh, the uh, adjoint matrix theorem. I'm going to start with a new page. The adjoint matrix uh, theorem. So uh, M, N by N matrix, as before. Then uh, the determinant of M times determinant N, N one N one N equals determinant N one one times determinant N N minus one N N one. Yes. So uh, you can imagine the matrix uh, like this. So here we have the full matrix, the determinant of the full matrix times, what is this? You delete the first row, first last col row, first column, last column, so you uh, have this part here. The matrix, the determinant of this matrix times determinant of the matrix center here is equal to, here you delete the first row, first column, so you have this part times uh, uh, you have this part minus you have uh, you delete first and last so you are here times last and first column so uh, last row 
first columns are here. So it looks like this. So if M is a two by two matrix, you, you, this is just one. We, we just say this is one. So this, there's nothing here. Then two by two matrix is, of course, the product of uh, A times B or, or A times D, A times D minus uh, C times B. So it is kind of a generalization of that in N by N uh, case. So it's an interesting uh, theorem. So let's prove this. Proof is also interesting. Not very difficult. Mm. All right, so let's say that MC is the cofactor matrix. Of M. In other words, uh, this more precisely minus one I plus J. M, J, I, determinant of this, uh, I, J, from 1 to N. The cofactor means you delete uh, I throw J column, or oh, actually here, the other way around, J row, I column, and you take the determinant of the remaining uh, matrix, and you have some sign attached like this. And it is a very well-known fact in uh, linear algebra that if you multiply these two you, we get diagonal matrix with uh, the determinant of the matrix in the diagonal like this. This is a well known fact. Do you remember this from uh, linear algebra? This is, this follows from the fact that we can expand a matrix along any row or any column. This is basically uh, the fact equivalent to the fact that matrix can be expanded along any row, any column. So it's a well-known fact. I'm not going to say more, more, more than that. So now, uh, so what, what is this? Let's take the determinant of both. Then we get determinant of M times determinant of C equals determinant of this diagonal matrix. But of course, it will be the product of this. So it's going to be uh, m raised to nth power. OK? Now we're going to divide both sides by m, determinant of m. What if the determinant of m is 0? We will assume that determinant of m is not 0, because it's a general situation. Think of this as polynomial in the entries there. So it's, n it's not going to be 0. So we can divide this by this. So we know what the determinant of this cofactor matrix is. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, so far, so good. We're going to consider another matrix. Uh, let's say M star. This is basically a uh, the first column is the same as uh, MMC, so M11, minus the signs are alternating, M12, so minus 1 to N plus 1, MN1. The first row and the last column, the uh, first column and the last column are the same as this. So what is the last column? N plus 1, M, uh, Oh, I think I made a mistake. Because uh, the f uh, superscript uh, tells the row, row, row number. So, mm, a 2, 1, n 1. So it's the row like this. Uh, so the, the last one, the sign is plus, so like that. So what is this part in the middle? It will be the identity matrix. Basically, it's like this. Okay, so th is th this part is the 
the part of the identity matrix from the second row, uh, second column to the second last column. Do you see that? Oh, uh, no. It's wrong. Like this. So if, if you have one and one, it will be the ident exactly the identity matrix. So it will be, this is the part of the identity matrix, and the first and the last column are a part of this. So we kind of uh, combine them together. Okay, now let's see what happens if you multiply uh, m times n. Now, uh, m times m star. Let's see what happens. So imagine we have m here. So we have m. So for the first column, it's exactly the same as this, the first column of this. Okay, because we multiply this way, this way. So the first column is the same as the first column of this. Do you see that? If you multiply these two, because the first column of the second matrix is the same as the first column of this. So the first column is this. Last column also, because the last column of this matrix is the same as the last column of this. Okay. What is the uh, the remaining part? This is the identity matrix. Part of the identity matrix. So we will get exactly that part from this. So it's going to be one, uh, one two, uh, m one two m one three, m one n minus one, like that. M n two, m n three, m n n minus 1, like that. This is the part of the matrix of here, except the first and last column. Okay? This one? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can change this then. I, J. Oh, no, no, no. I think this is right. J, I. Yeah, I think this is right because here we have this. Is it okay now? Other questions? Now, there is nothing very difficult here, only we have uh, this uh, very, this is a brilliant idea, of course, but other than that, everything is quite straightforward. Just multiplication of matrices. There are only just many terms there. So, uh, now let's compute the determinant of this. So, I'm going to uh, continue over here. So, the determinant of the, this part determinant m star is of course the determinant of this. And what is the determinant of this? If you uh, compute the determinant, you, we basically select one uh, entry, each row, each column. So we have to select this in this column because otherwise we have zero. Also here. So other than that, we have to select we have to compute the determinant of this part. What is this? What is this in terms of m in our notation? m, we deleted the first row, uh, first row, first column, last row, la last column. So it's going to be 1, n, 1, n, this part. So here, the, match, the product of this will be uh, m times m times. So we have these two m squared times what? This part. Okay? If you compute this matrix. But now, let's compute uh, 
So here, from this, by dividing this, we get this. m times m1n, 1n. Now, let's compute m uh, star directly from this uh, matrix. We can do that. On the other hand, let's compute this. Again, we select one uh, uh, entry, each row, each column. We have to select this, right? Otherwise, we will have zero. Again, then we have already selected all of these. Then what, what do we have? Now we are left with this and this and this and this. So what is the de determinant of this? This will give us one. And now we have to compute the two by two matrix of these four corners, at these four corners. That's exactly what we want. So this times this, m11 times mnn. And here, this times this, they, they, the signs become just 1, so minus. Right? This is the end of the proof. We obtained that these two are the same. That is uh, as stated over here. So that's the proof. Any question? Okay. Yeah, I think this, uh, considering this matrix is very uh, interesting, but if you have this, yeah, it proves pretty nicely. All right. I, uh, this uh, kind of, uh, this is quite useful and then it is used uh, often in uh, computing determinants. Okay, now we're going to do Dawson's algorithm to compute determinants. Okay, uh, Dawson. Determinant, determinant evaluation. algorithm. And it's also called Dawson condensation. Yeah. Have you heard of uh, this name Dawson? Probably you haven't. But he is actually a very famous man. He is better known as uh, Lewis Carroll, his pen name. He, is actually, he was actually a writer, very famous writer. Have you heard of Lewis Carroll? He was the author of the book, uh, uh, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Probably you know this, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. So this guy, he was a writer and also a mathematician probably something else more. Back then, people did many things at the same time. <laughs> anyway, he's a very famous man in that way. Uh, so what is this? Algor is this an algorithm? So because it's an algorithm, it must have an input and the output. What is the input? M, matrix, n by n matrix. The output, determinant. Okay, let's uh, describe the matrix. So it's kind of a recursive way. It, we reduce the size of the matrix uh, one by one, and at the end, we will obtain just one by one matrix, which is just a number, and that will be the determinant. So let's say first A equals M and B equals uh, N minus 1 by N minus 1 matrix so with all entries 1. So just 1, everything is 1 here. 
Now uh, we, we will construct another matrix, another pair of matrices. Uh, construct, construct uh, a one, a prime, b prime, uh, as follows. In this way, we will uh, write in this uh, because we will use this many times. So, I if we obtain a prime, b prime from a b in this algorithm, we're gonna denote like this. So. How do we def how do we construct this? Uh, it's quite simple actually. So a prime, if you write this a prime i j, if we write this i j entry like that. So a prime is the size of a prime is uh, small one uh, smaller than a. So it's n gon it's going to be n minus one times n minus one matrix and b is one smaller than b, uh, b prime is one uh, smaller than b. One to n minus two then. So what is this? A i j prime is the two by two matrix. <coughs> oh, it's gonna be i j. i j plus one. A i plus one j, A i plus one j plus one, and divided by uh, B i j. Let me write and then explain. And this is A i plus one j plus one. Okay, what does this what does this mean? So we have originally we have a matrix, right? Okay, we have a matrix like this, and we basically compute the two by two, um, the determinant of the two by two consecutive uh, minors or consecutive uh, matrices, matrices like this. So we have two by two matrix here. Compute the determinant of this, and then compute the determinant of this, and compute the determinant of this, etc. And then you record the determinant, the two by two determinants. And because we had, so here we have a. And the size of B is uh, small, one smaller than that. So compute this, two by two matrix of this, and then divide that determinant by this number, like that. And for here, divide that number by this, etc. So we will get uh, the new matrix, A prime. What is B? What is B prime? It's just uh, the center of this. This part, this part will be B prime. You just copy this and then paste over here. That's going to be B prime. So the size of this is the size of A minus two. So it will be uh, K minus uh, N minus two times N minus two. This is the uh, this is how we com construct A prime B prime. So in this way, we re can reduce the size of the matrix by one, and we will do this until we have uh, just one by one matrix. So here, um, I think now I can e erase this. Okay, uh, okay. Wait a second. So the question is, are the entries in bi j the entries here are all one? Yes, at the beginning yes, but after this, this will be changed. Yes, so because here we will obtain another a new matrix of new pair of matrices. Here they are all ones, but now they are not all ones. But we will do this again. A double prime, b double prime, etc. Until. Actually, we will go this uh, n times, or n minus one times, so that this has only one entry, right? And the claim is that is the determinant of the matrix M, original matrix. So here, uh, let me now erase this part. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a good question. If B, I, J, we, are, we will 
assume that p i j s are not zero. If that happens, that may happen, of course. But if that happens, then this Lewis Carroll he suggested arrange the original matrix, the rows and rearrange the rows and columns of the uh, original matrix, and then do this again. So that's basically the idea. But we will uh, consider only consider the situations where b i j s are not zero. Otherwise, yeah, it, it has some problem. But we will assume that we have, yeah, a nice situation. Mm. Mm. I'm not sure. Maybe at each time we 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 should have a non-zero entries there. Yeah. Mm. Yes, that's right. Yeah, so it may sound very restrictive, but yeah, it is useful. We will see how we use this. Other questions? <laughs> we will see an example. Yeah. Okay, so I, I have to finish this. So uh, do this process until B has uh, no entries. Or in other words, A has only one entry. So yeah, I, I, I'm going to write this way. If B has a zero, the original matrix should be uh, rearranged, or the, the rows and columns are re should be rearranged. Yes. But of course, if we had many zeros in the original matrix M, for instance, suppose M is the identity matrix, no matter how you rearrange the rows and columns, you will always have many, many zeros, so it doesn't work. But we will consider, um, we will not consider that case when, it, when we apply this. So sometimes this may not be applied. But in general situation, when we say that the entries are like just variables, like general variables, so we can do this. All right. Uh, yes, then the determinant of M equals the unique entry in A, because A is now an one by one matrix. So this is the claim. We're going to prove this. But before proving this, let me illustrate uh, this algorithm using an example. Question, any question before I move on? Okay, so here's an example. A is this 4 by 4 matrix. 1, minus 2, minus 1, 3. 2, 1, minus 1, 2. Minus 1, minus 2. 1, minus 3. 0, minus 1, minus 1, 2. And B here, the first is set to be just this. Now you see, uh, there's no, there are no zeros here in the center, so should be okay. What is A prime? So it's going to be a three by three matrix. You compute the determinant of this. Determinant of this part, one, one, one minus uh, minus four, so it's five. 5 divided by 1, but it's going to be always just 5, okay? Now, determinant of this part. 2, 1, minus, minus 1, so it's going to be 3, okay? And for here, minus 2 plus 3 is 1. Now, this determinant of this. 
minus 4, uh, plus 1, minus 3. 1, uh, minus 2, minus 1. 3, minus 2, is 1. 1, uh, 0. 2, plus 1, 3. 2, plus, uh, 2 minus 3 is minus 1. Okay? Now, what is B prime? You just cons uh, uh, just take this part, and then this will be just exactly this part over here. So it's 1 minus 1, minus 2, 1. Continue, A double prime. You take the determinant of this part. Minus 5 uh, plus 9 is 4. And here, 3 plus 1 is 4. Minus 9 plus 1, minus 8. Oh, is that right? Uh, wait. Maybe I made a mistake in this lecture note, but <laughs> let's let's just continue. Did, did I make any mistake before? Uh, here? Minus? Here? Okay. Okay. Ah, ah, matta, matta. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, we, I, I forgot to uh, divide each with uh, this by this. So this is okay. This is minus. Okay. Yeah, that's why this is not this is not uh, this. Okay. Now I, I see. So the determinant of this part uh, is minus eight, but we have to divide that number by this. So it's going to be four. Now what is this? 1 minus 3 minus 2 divide by 1 is minus 2. V prime, V double prime, you just take this part in the center. It's minus 1. Now we are almost done. Determinant of this, minus 8 uh, plus 16 is minus uh, is 8. But we have to divide that number by this. So it's going to be minus 8. And B Triple prime is nothing. There's oh, not zero, nothing. So now, the th what the, the algorithm says is that the original determinant of the original matrix is minus eight. This part. That's it. So it can be useful because we can reduce the size by one by one. Of course, we have to de compute many many things, many many determinants, but they are all just two by two mat matrices, so not that bad. But it is not clear why we should, we should get the determinant. But it follows from the fact that the, we, we, we will use uh, the adjoint matrix theorem. But so let's, let's see why this always works. So why Dawson's condensation Works. Uh, all right. Uh, we're gonna do this situation to uh, consider this i j from one to n. So we have the origin. Of, this is the input, and we will, we're gonna say that we're gonna define a i. B, uh, A's and B's like this. So f initially we set A0, B0 to be uh, and uh, all one matrix, let's say. Initial setting is like this. And we will define uh, more. This is the definition. AK is the matrix is the matrix uh, and whose entries are k plus 1 times k plus 1 are the adjacent minors of M. So a minor means the determinant of a matrix obtained by deleting rows and columns, like M super some uh, 
indices and uh, subscript with some indices. Minor means something like this, I1, dot, 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 I, K, J1, J, K. Determinant of this, minor. Usually minor means the determinant. Adjacent means these are all consecutive. So in the diagram, we will consider, so this is the matrix whose entries are determinant of this. So here, K by K. The one, one comma one entry is this, and the two comma two, uh, one comma two entry is the determinant of this part, and then one comma three is the determinant of this part, etc. Okay, this is the definition. Is the definition clear? More precisely, if you want, uh, I can write down exact statement or. So the IJ entry, um, if, so if this, if we say more well, precisely, if we, if you say AIJ, uh, so what is, okay, let me write this here. So what is the size of this then? What do you think the size of this is? n by n is not going to be n by n. You can think about this. The first entry will be here. But now, the, how can we go to the left, to the right? How far can we go to the right? n, n minus k. Right? Plus one? Plus one? <laughs> n minus k? Uh, it should be n minus k it, it, because m is over there. But yeah, think about that. If, if we say this, a i j k means the determinant of what? Uh, a, the original matrix m. You Begin with i, i plus 1, dot, 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 i plus k minus 1. So k consecutive thing. Uh, j, j plus 1, j plus k minus 1, like that. Okay? <laughs> That's right. Complement of this, I would say. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm not very precise. This is not uh, consistent with our notation. Mm. Okay, maybe I can just write down the exact matrix. A I J. Okay. A uh, R S R R is from one to okay. R is from I to I plus K minus one, S is from J to J plus K minus one. Okay? This is what I meant. You take uh, the ij entry here, if you here, then you take the determinant of this. The size is k by k. And that will give you one entry here in this matrix. Okay? Mm. Now, I'm not quite sure if this is correct. Oh. Oh yeah, because, yeah, that's right, that's right. Because this k plus 1 times k plus 1, not k by k, I, I made a mistake. Sorry about that. It's like that. So it's k plus 1 by k plus 1. That's why, that now this is correct. Yeah. 
Any question? This is the definition of AK, A super K. Oh, and what is BK? And BK is the central sub matrix of AK minus 1. Yes. The previous, the, we have previous matrix A, and then you take the central part, like we did for this Dotson's algorithm, and then that will be uh, our B K. All right. Any question about this construction A and B? These are just the definition, just definition of A K, definition of B K. We didn't do anything. Now the claim is the following uh, claim. If you apply Dawson's, uh, the step in the Dawson's algorithm, then we get the next pair of matrices. This is the claim. If you do this, we get this. Okay? Right, why? Proof, proof of the claim. So it's by definition, the original, the first step is just uh, fo just follows from the definition, right? This is exactly the same as Dawson's algorithm. The first step of the Dawson's algorithm, because the original matrix, all one matrix, what is this? Two by two matrix, because it's one. It's the, uh, determin uh, it's the, the entries are two by two matrices of this, a determinant of two by two matrices of this. And this part, we just take the central sum matrix of this, the exactly the same. So k equals one case is uh, trivial. So now let's say k is greater than or equal to two. Okay. Uh, so here we we have this. We will use this notation. See the uh, okay. So what is a i j the i j entry of this matrix? What is this? By definition, is the determinant of k plus one times k plus one sub matrix. So it's the determinant. Let's say this this way, where n is. So here, let's look at this. This is original matrix M. So we have AIJ over here. So that's going to be AIJ and AI plus 1J until AI, oh no, 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 AIJ plus 1. Okay, I, I, I don't have enough space, so I'm going to just write that way. AIJ plus K. K by, because it's a K by K matrix. A i plus k, j, a uh, i plus k, j plus k. Okay. This is just this part. I just moved this part over here. Everyone's okay. Now we are going to apply uh, the adjoint matrix theorem. Apply the adjoint matrix theorem to this matrix N. Now, uh, remember, uh, I'm going to draw the diagram. This is the whole matrix N. N is here. The ad adjoint matrix theorem says the following. We have this part and this part. Determinant of this, determinant of this equals determinant of this, determinant of this, minus determinant of this, determinant of 
this, right? Now we will look at uh, what exactly the each determinant is. What is this? What is the determinant of n? Can you tell me what this is? I'm going to use uh, red. Hmm? A, I, J, K. Just look at this. This is, that's it. And what about this part over here? Huh? K minus 1? A, I, J, K minus 1? Mm, maybe you're right, but I'm going to write this way. In terms of B. Because, uh, okay, this is uh, K plus 1 times K plus 1. This is oh, plus 1. K minus 1 times K minus 1, right? But here, uh, this part he is uh, over here, right? K minus 1 times K minus 1. Uh, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Hmm? Let me think about this. Why is this B? <laughs> so B, we need to go back to B. K minus 1. BK minus 1. Some matrix of this. Okay, let's do this slowly. Uh, B, K minus 1. The sum matrix of, sum matrix of A, K minus 2. Right? So this is, uh, the entries are K minus 1 by K minus 1. A determinant of K minus 1 by K minus 1. Because of this. And we, we took uh, the only central part. So here, if you look at this, determinant of this, it's going to be uh, basically A I plus 1, J pl plus 1, K uh, minus 2. This part, right? Determinant of this part. But this is equal to B I J K minus 1 because B K minus one is the central matrix of A K minus two. Okay, yeah, you need to think about this, but yeah, that that works. That's why we have this. All right, are you okay? Okay, let's uh, continue. What is this then? Now you can you can tell me. Now everything in terms of A just A. Now we don't need B anymore. What is this part? Hmm? A, in terms of A, A, I, I, J, K minus 1, right? Do you see? So K minus, uh, K by K matrix, so we must be K minus 1 over here. What about this? In terms of A, the, the start, the starting point is A, I plus 1, J plus 1. So it's going to be A, I plus 1, J plus 1. And the size is K, so K minus 1. Okay? And do this again. Here, what is this? What is the uh, uh, position of this? A, I plus 1? I, yeah, I and J plus 1. And here is, they're all K minus 1 because the sizes are all K by K. And finally, what is this? So what is the position of the, over here? A, I plus 1, J, K minus 1. So what we obtained is this, this relation. All right? 
And do you recognize this? What does this mean? This is the determinant, nothing but just determinant. Uh, a i plus 1, j plus 1, k minus 1, a i j plus 1, k minus 1, a i plus 1, j, k minus 1. Okay? So this part is equal to the determinant of the previous matrix, 2 by 2 determinant of the previous matrix divided by these B entries. Okay? This is exactly what uh, this says. So we obtain an entry here by taking the 2 by 2 matrix, some matrix here, and then divide that number by the entry here. Because you have to divide that by number, by this number. So this is equivalent to this. So that's the proof of this claim. Any question? Minus. Yeah. yeah. You need to think about this and then do it by yourself if you really. Uh, but there is nothing very uh, difficult here. There are just many things to check, but yeah, you can do this if you really uh, have time and energy and passion. <laughs> okay. So this is why Dawson's uh, condensation works. Any question about this? All right. So try to do this by yourself after lecture. And now, uh, so one nice feature of this Dawson's algorithm is is this. So what what did we do here? We computed only two by two matrices. Everything was just two by two matrices. That means if you define two by two matrix in a slightly different way, kind of generalize, mat we can generalize the, mat uh, mat the determinant of a matrix by generalizing the determinant of a two by two matrix. That's uh, what uh, we're going to do here. It's called the lambda determinant. So it's a generalization of the usual determinant. So uh, if I write Dawson's algorithm allows us to compute the determinant using uh, two by two only, right? Because Dawson's algorithm, you, original matrix, you take the determinant of the two by two matrices, you create a new matrix, and then you do this again, again and again. All you need, all you need is just a two by two matrix, determinant of two by two matrix. So, so let's generalize. We generalize uh, determinant of two by two matrix as follows. So we have two by two matrix, A1, 1, A1, 2, A2, 1, A2, 2. So just to, just to specify that we are doing lambda determinant instead of the usual, we're going to put this subscript over here. So this is the definition. Definition is A1, 1, A1, uh, A2, 2 plus lambda A1, 2, A2, 1. This is a definition. So if lambda equals minus 1, we get the usual determinant, the usual determinant. Right? Do you see? Because if we have coefficient minus 1, that's two by two the definition of the usual 2 by 2 matrix, determinant of 2 by 2 matrix. If you define 
the determinant of two by two matrix like this, we can define uh, how can you define the determinant, lambda determinant of an n by n matrix? Use the Dotson's uh, condensation. So using uh, Dotson's algorithm, we define lambda determinant. Just using this. Dotson's algorithm requires only the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix, and for determin the 2 by 2 matrix, we will use just lambda determinant. That's it. So, example. We know determinant of lambda determinant of 2 by 2 matrix. Let's compute 3 by 3. It's going to take a long time. Lambda. Okay. How how do you do that? Uh, yes. I think. Yeah, I'm gonna start in the next page because it will take a lot, a lot of space. Okay. So this is uh, computed as follows. I'm going to begin in the next page. So the idea is you have this matrix and then all one matrices, not just one, and then you continue using Dotson's algorithm, using a lambda determinant. And let's see how we do that. So initially, we have the matrix A2, uh, 1, A2, 2, A2, 3, A3, 1. 1, A3, 2, A3, 3, and 1, 1, 1, 1. Now we're going to apply Dotson's algorithm there. So, just, so here the entry of the matrix here will be the 2 by determinant of the 2 by 2 matrices. So we're going to just write down uh, precisely using lambda determinant because we're going to do step by step. Lambda, A12, A13, A22, A23, Lambda, A21, A22, A31, A32, sub Lambda, A32, A22, oh. A23, A32, A33, Lambda. And what is the entry here? Just this part. Okay? Just Dawson's algorithm with lambda determinant. That's it. Uh, we need to compute this. So this part is equal to uh, what? Just use the Dawson's algorithm. I, I mean the lambda determinant, definition of lambda determinant. So A11, A22 plus a12, A21 for this. Right? What is this? A12, A23 plus, oh, I forgot lambda here. Lambda, A13, A22 for this matrix. Here, A21, A32 plus lambda, A22, A31. Here, a22, A33 plus lambda, A23, A33. And this is just the same. Now, we have to do one more time. So, we need to compute the determinant of, lambda determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix for the next entry here, right? Where is the next entry? Mm. Okay, I'm going to write this way. Lambda n here is going to be uh, not, not, not zero. Nothing. Nothing left. Okay? I just uh, copy this thing. Oh, uh, but this is not right. I missed one. I missed uh, this again. 
right? We have to divide this by this. Now, so what is the determinant of original lambda? What is the lambda determinant of the original matrix? It's going to be this thing divided by this. So let's do the computation. Um, so this times this. Yeah, I'm going to quickly write times a two two a three three lambda a two three a three three plus lambda times this and this a one two a two three lambda a one three a two two times a two one a three two lambda a two two a three one divided by a two two right so this is the lambda determinant of 3 by 3 matrix. In this way, you can compute 4 by 4, determ lambda determinant of 4 by 4, etc. And let, let me uh, continue. So here, if you expand this and then uh, com com compute, what we get is this. 2, 2, 8, 3, 3, lambda, a one two, A two one, A three three, Lambda, A one one, A two three, A three two, Lambda squared, A one two, A two one, A three two, two three, A three two, divided by A two two, plus Lambda, A one two, A two three, a21, A32, over A22. A21, A32. Yes, A12, A23. Yes, it looks quite complicated. Fi finally, right? Now, you can see, you can easily see that each term is going to be a monomial in these variables, a i s, a i j s, and lambda. So, so, lambda determinant is a sum of monomials of a i j. And probably some, we have some inverses and their inverses. Their inverses are uh, yes, multiplied by a polynomial in lambda like this. We always have something like this. Okay. Mm, okay, I think it's time to take a break. So we will resume after 10 minutes.